us to get started. I know some more folks are going to be coming in, but it, uh, it is, it's 1800. I need to be a bit active right now. So we will get started. Welcome to the Sunday evening services for the University Church of Christ in Canyon, Texas on Mother's Day. On Sunday, Mother's Day. I, um, I'm, I'm, I miss having mom at, at church with me. That hasn't happened in a while. Uh, she, she hasn't been coming with Christy and me. Um, they, my mom was always one of the, you know how moms are. They, they, they take it, they take it easier. Well, I want to say she took it easier on me, but some things were, um, she, she had a nice way of putting things. I've been told pretty much my whole life that I'm loud. <laughs> and my mom would say, she said, you're not loud. Your voice just carries. I was like, yeah, I like that. It's just that my voice carries. It's not that I'm loud. Um, I picked out songs tonight. Three of the four songs are favorites of my mom. Songs, she had tons of favorites, but three distinct songs that I remember growing up, walking around the house, and I would hear them from the kitchen, or from the utility room, or somewhere in the house, and uh, th those things stick with you. And I'm kind of thankful that Mom was not here this morning to learn that her grandson was in a smoking contest. <laughs> I I asked B Dub. I was like, so was this was this cigarettes, or was it a pot, or I had, to, I had to clarify what this smoking contest was. He assured me that he did not win, so good, maybe. I said, well, that doesn't mean you need more practice. <laughs> song number 538. This song uh, will hopefully get us uh, thinking along the lines of, uh, of the lesson this morning, our sermon, and um, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. We are going to do verses 1, 2, and 4. <coughs> My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. for giving us this evening that we can come together to worship you. Please help us use this time effectively toward glorifying your name and becoming closer to you and to one another. It's in Jesus' name, amen.
So you say one thing wrong, and everybody hears that. <laughs> My wife told me that at lunch. She's like, you know you just put those boys in a smoking com uh, competition? And I was like, yeah. She was like, you know what that sounded like? <laughs> oh. <laughs> smoking meat. They smoke meat, I promise. <laughs> okay. Did anybody look at that uh, online when the when the kids did the? Was it, I think it's like what is it? News chat. Who was that with? News ten? News channel ten? You did that? Four. News four. Yeah. Anybody sure. done it? Everyone want to watch it yet? Do you listen to my sermons? I told you to go back and watch that. <laughs> All right. It was man. I tell you, that was a great interview. Great interview. Okay. Um, What's that? Righty tighty, yeah, I know. So I'm going, it's the opposite underneath. So, all right. What did you hear this morning? What did you hear? I want to make sure we're on the same page. No pun intended. Everyone is a builder. Everyone is a builder. I like that. So, what did you get out of that? Yeah, so you're going to build on something. The question is, which one are you going to build on? Very good, thank you. Everyone has a choice of where you're going to build. Yes, everyone has a choice of where you're going to build. Okay? Have a blueprint. Love it. Have a blueprint. 100%. Anything else? Big storms will come. Storms are going to come. Who said that? Is that two for you tonight? <laughs> what? I was looking for you this morning. I could not get the photocopier to work. I was so mad at myself. <laughs> and then Chris Roberts comes in, does it. I was like, cute. What would you say over here? Be a doer. Be a doer. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight, too. Anything else? If you're not building on Jesus, you would. Yeah, if you're not building on Christ, if you build a weak foundation, it's going to be weak, right? No matter what happens. I, I was going to use an example. Um, there was a house that's built in our neighborhood. It's one of the first houses that were, was built. It's beautiful. It's right across the road from us. It's green. I don't know. You probably have seen it. Uh, but it was a model home. And uh, we wish, oh, we wish it was up for sale because we would have bought it. So, but we bought ours, and then that house went up for sale. I'm like, oh man, we missed it. And then somebody's like, you don't want to build that, buy that house. And we're like, why not? They're like, when they built it, it was one of the first houses out here. It was a model home. They didn't prepare the ground properly, and that house has nothing but problems because the foundation wasn't right. It's beautiful, but the foundation wasn't right. So that house, right from the very beginning, is a not a great house uh, because of the foundation. Anybody else? You guys are doing really well. Thank you for listening today. This worked in the other room. Did I spell that right? Similarities? Tell me the similarities between the wise and foolish builder. Hello. They both build. What's that? Builders. Yeah, you're right. They, 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 they both build houses. This one built a house. This one built a house. Okay, hold on. So let's just talk about this for a second. They both had the opportunity to build the house. They were active in building their houses, right? When you build a house, it doesn't pop up. You don't say, I want a house. Boom, there's a house, right? When you're going to build a house, there's planning involved. H-O-U-S-E. Um, huh? Oh, there's, I'll fix the other one. Yes, I'll, E's for everyone. Vanna wasn't here to tell me there was a vowel. Um, but there's, this is active. So you are planning to build a house. You're looking at where you want to build the house, and you start building the house, and you start building the house the way you want to build the house. So I want you to understand that there's something here. This is very, both of these are very active. Okay? They both did it. 
Um, and, and also, they were able to complete their houses. So not one of these are under half construction or a little bit. Or no, these are built houses. Are we on the same page? Okay, good. Uh, another similarity that we have here, um, somebody said it. Both what? So they heard the same words. So this is a lot of my notes that I can never get into my sermon, okay? <laughs> but this, this, uh, it just doesn't flow right with my sermon, so no, we get to talk about it tonight. Both heard the same words. Of? Whose words? Jesus. Yeah, Christ's words, God's. You, you, you can do both. So both of them heard the same words. They heard Christ's words. Okay? So they heard words. These people heard words. They also have another foundation. They don't only have Christ's words from the Sermon on the Mount and later on the things that he's going to teach them, but they also have the Torah. They also have the prophets. So these people are, are people who know God. That's what I want to pull out here. They know God. They know God. And they know God. This is not talking about believer and unbeliever. Are you with me or are you not with me? I need to know. Okay? This is all believers. Are people who should know. They heard the same words. Okay? So they've, they've heard all the same words. They heard the sermons, the prophets, the Old Testament. They had the privilege to hear Christ's words. And you're also going to find that, that they both battled the same storms. The storms are the same. Okay? Uh, the storms of life that we talked about this morning, they both received rain. They both had the floods. They both had the wind. Um, no life is without struggles. No life is without challenges or tests. The storms are going to come. And Christ said, the storm's going to come here, and the storms are going to come here. But what is the difference? What is the difference between this wise person and the foolish person? It is the foundation, 100%. But what's the final outcome of both? Acting on the words I heard. Okay, there's action. I'm really glad you heard that. was a great job. So there's action. And when the storms and the wind comes, what happens here? One house is destroyed and one stands. Yeah, this one stands. This is destroyed. Okay? So you have a, a different outcome because of what has happened beforehand and what the, the choices that they have made up here. I want you to see the similarities, and I wish I kind of done it this morning, uh, but I just didn't think it would flow properly. But this is going to stand, and this is going to fall down. Now, you saw that in Matthew. Tonight, what I want to look at with you is not Matthew's account. I want you to look at Luke's account. Luke chapter what? Who can tell me? when? Huh? Luke chapter 6. So I want you guys to go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. You're going to look, what? 46. Almost fell over. Luke chapter 6 is going to start in verse 46. I like what Luke does here. I actually was going to change my whole lesson and come from the gospel of Luke instead of Matthew, but I went back to Matthew because that's where I started uh, a couple of months ago. So, but when you come to Luke chapter 6, there's a few things that I want us to pull out of here. What does it say in verse uh, 46? Somebody with a nice, loud, booming voice, read it to me. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me... Well, uh, uh, no, you, you went to verse 47. Excuse me, my bad. <laughs> Lord, Lord. What does Lord, Lord mean? What does Lord in this connotation mean? Hello? Master. Huh? Master. Yes. Master. I am changing colors. I am so angry at the black right now. <laughs> Master. Anything else you want to add to that? Rule. That means there's somebody over you. Okay? So we have a master. We have a ruler. Okay? Here's somebody who's saying, um, I am over you. So I want you to put this verse in your own words. 
Put the verse in your own words. What's, what's he trying to tell us in verse 46? Listen to me, Karen. Okay, listen to me. What did you say at the end? <laughs> okay. Okay, that, I'm going to come right back to that. It's like he's saying, you know, teacher, teacher, you call me teacher, teacher, but you don't listen. Okay. And so it's exactly what you guys are both saying. Why are you saying, master of master, the one who rules over my life, I've given you my life, I'm listening to you, you are the one, and then you don't do what I say? As a parent, you ever said that to your child before? It's the same as when we say, I know. That was one of the pet peeves, like, the kids would say, I know. I was like, yes, I know you know, now do it. Yeah, like I know what you're saying, Mom, but I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. And we're saying the, exactly the same thing. And Jesus, if, if he just comes to this moment and says, why do you call me master? Why do you say I rule over your life? And then you do what you want and not what I'm trying to tell you. And what's the answer? Well, he tells us the answer. I want to break down the next part here into three pieces. Um, can you read verse 47 now? please I will allow it <laughs> everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them I will show you what he is like I love it the first part that you find what Jesus says to me says to all of us excuse me he says I want whoever comes to me whoever comes to me now the reason I love Luke's passage so much look at next look at the next verse he is like a man who is building a house. Now that's normal. It goes back to Matthew chapter 7. Same thing. But I love this. What's the next a couple words? Who, what? Doug. Deep. Beep. Doug. Deep. What in the world does that mean? Hard work. Who, who is that? Is that in the back? All right. Hard work, 100%. So I'm going to start our little diagram on the bottom here. Okay, so we want to build a house, right? Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you. <laughs> we want to build a house, but there's a problem. What's the first problem? What does he say you have to do? I want you to come to me. Okay? So uh, some of you just said, hey, there's going to be a lot of work to get to Christ. Remember what he is? I'm the rock. But what is he saying? You have to dig deep. Where's the foundation? Under the soil. Under the soil. He goes, now I want you to dig. Who enjoys digging? Oh, no, not me. Anybody here enjoy digging? Anybody enjoy hard labor? Why do you think we have a backhoe, right? Who do, why do we invent a backhoe? Because we don't want to do the work. But what he's saying to us here, he goes, we have to get through all of this to get to Christ. So what does that mean? What is this stuff here? Mm, yes. Yes. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not against that because digging is listening to Christ and doing what he wants us to do. What? Persistence. It is persistence. Study. Huh? Study. Okay. Study. Yes. This is you. You got to get rid of all the junk to get to the rock. You understand? So now what is this? You. <laughs> Come on, Tori, just go ahead. That's what you just said. I know it just said that. I know it just said that. So give me more specifics of what it would be. Everything you just said is correct, what you just said a moment ago. If you're going to come to him, that means there is study involved. Yes, there is persistence involved. But what are, tell me specifically, what are some of the things that we're going to have to get rid of out of our life to get to the foundation? Selfishness. Selfishness. So now we're going to take selfishness and ourselves out of the picture. What else do we have to take rid of? Sin. Sin. Who said sin? So I, let's use the category that we've been using in our Sunday morning Bible class, idolatry. It covers a whole lot of stuff. Whatever is between you and God that's hindering your relationship with God, that's not allowing you to get to Christ, pride. it's got to go. Okay? So that could be pride. It could be the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, uh, the pride of life. All of those things, the idolatry has to go. Okay? 
So we start taking away. And what we're doing, do you remember what Jesus said to us all the way back in the Sermon on the Mount? Ask, you go ahead and finish it. Ask, and you will shall find. Seek, and you will find. Ask, and you shall be given to you. Knock, and the door will be opened, right? So what is he saying? I want you to come to me. But you're going to have to ask. You're going to have to knock. You're going to have to seek. This is not just something that, you know, you say, okay, I want Christ in my life. And it happens. <coughs> Does, you understand what I'm saying? There is work involved on our side. And he goes, I need you to start digging. And I need you to dig deep. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to wade through uh, right here so that I can get to the foundation. Okay? Agree, disagree, what are you thinking? Is there anything else that we have to get rid of? Control. Control. Let's get rid of that. We've got to give up our control and give it to God. Anybody think else? Well, he tells them in, in that verse to get rid of lip service. Yes, absolutely. It's not just, not just with lip service, but it's more with, with our heart, going back to our core. Man, these, these, are the, these are the moments when you listen to Christ's teachings and this really becomes really hard. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to hate your mother and your father, your brother and your sister. You've got to put those to the side and make sure we understand who God really is. Explain to me what that passage means when Jesus says those things. That nothing comes before God. Nothing comes before God. That's what it is. It's not that I'm going to hate my wife or hate my mom and my dad. I love them. But they don't come before God. My wife doesn't come before God. My kids don't become before my God. God is first. And so we start wiping all these things down. And what we're doing is eliminating us out of the equation and we're coming to a firm foundation. Far too often, we want to come to God and say, okay, I am going to dig on the, I'm, I'm going to build my house, I'm going to build it on the rock, and we've done no dirt work whatsoever. Zero dirt work. Oh, we've made it flat. We made it pretty. We made it, and we put it in the right spot where it's going to look good in my life. And, but we're not on the rock. We're not on the solid rock. When we get, finally get rid of everything here, he goes, I need you to dig deep. I want you to come to me. So what happens when we come to him? Okay, good. Very good. We come empty and we're asking Christ, you fill me. You're in control now. I love it. Now we're cooking. We take up our cross. Right? Bless you. We take up our cross. We follow him. We take up, and this is a follow. This is absolute follow. This is absolute uh, dedication. It's really, it's really interesting. When you look at the process that Jesus uses with his first disciples, um, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God. And a couple of them get up and they go. Where are you staying? Come and see. That's what he says. Later on he says, Follow me. Later on he shows up the book of boats. Now I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me. And there's a process, bless you, all the way through this that he takes a little bit. Just keep coming, keep coming. And so those disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, are going to be starting to wipe away all of this superficial dust and dirt. What is the Messiah really going to be? What is the Messiah really supposed to look like? And who am I and all this? And they, and they take it away and become disciples. Okay? So the next part of this, what does he say now? Oh, I want to say one other thing. I did not get to say it in my lesson this morning because I don't think it would have come across right. That is not your foundation. Did you hear the words? No, what did you say? That, you did not build this foundation. This is not, when people come to me and they go, John, I'm trying to build a foundation. Well, that's great. It's going to fail because you're building it. The foundation is Jesus. Now go to it. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes or no? I, was gonna, I wanted to say it was actually in my lesson, and I scratched it out in the morning. I go, I do not think that will go over right, because I don't have time, and I don't have being able to look at your faces and making sure you understand what I'm trying to say. This is Christ. This is not a foundation that I've built. This is not something that I can do. Christ did it, okay, for me, okay? All right, so then what's the next step? I know we talked about it this morning, so we can go a little quicker. It's in your Bible, not hip. Come to me. 
Huh? Yeah. So now we're at we're now right here. His words. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go kind of quick here because I want to get to something else. So he says at the beginning. So he says here. What are you ringing the bell over? Going to ring the bell. Okay. Uh, then he says, "I want you to hear my words." What? Are, okay. This is the part I didn't get to talk about. And this is I don't never have time in a lesson. What are the words? Now I understand. John is the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, I get that. John is the Old Testament. Yeah, I get that. John is everything else that we learned. Okay, I get that. What are they? What do you learn? What's the words? What do you learn? You're building a foundation on it, so you better tell me what the words are. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Okay, so it's loving, loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Okay. It's the blueprint. Yes, it is the blueprint. You're right. Okay, let me do this because I don't, I don't have time. <laughs> so I'm looking at his words, talking about Christ, right? So tell me about his teachings. What do they, what do they teach you? Okay. That it's your heart first, not just the action. Yes. Can I put core changes? Are you okay with that? It comes from inside out. Yes. Core change. If you look on the Sermon on the Mount, if we just use the Sermon on the Mount, he always says, it was said, what's after the but? But I tell you, right? He wants core change from you. So we start with his teaching, and you look at all of his teachings. If you take the time and you look and just study teachings, not parables, teachings, you will see he's asking for a core change. It's a core change. You can't be you anymore. You can't be you anymore. It's a core change. Okay? Well, Tom, let me ask you this. Sally, how do you spell miracles? Tell me about his miracles. Why? What's the point? What do you learn? Yes, he's the Messiah. And the miracles point to that he is the Messiah. What else do they teach you? I know what John says in John chapter 20, what, 30, 31. He did all these signs that you may believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God. I, I've misparaphrased that. I understand that's what miracles did. Tell me about the miracles. What do you learn about Christ, his words, through his miracles? All things are possible with God. Okay, all things are possible with God. I love it. God's Anything powerful. Powerful, yes. Compassion. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with my wife first because I have to go home no, with her. That's a better word. What is it? Okay. Oh, she's going with worship. I'm, I'm the same. <laughs> we are in agreement. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is the thing I want you to see. The compassion and love that Jesus has is absolutely incredible. Are you willing to cleanse me of my leprosy? What does he say? Not only is he willing, he touches the leper. Nobody else would have done that. The man coming from the ceiling. I know he's making a point. I know he's making a point to the Pharisees that I can forgive sins as well. Take up your mat and walk. I get it. But there's love and there's compassion. You see his love and compassion. Feeding the 5,000. Before he does it, he sees and he has compassion over the people. You find compassion through miracles. His love for the people. Okay. Across the page in chapter 7, verse 13, there was a funeral going on. Yep. The son died. Only son of the mother. And she was a widow. When the Lord saw her, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. his heart went out to her. Love it. And said, don't cry. Yeah. I, thank you. Perfect example of what we're talking about. What do you learn from the parables? Thank you, Brenner. What do you learn from parables? Not teachings. This is different. Parables. Practical application. Application. We'll do, I'll take that. Application. Ben. <laughs> Did I spell it right? Is there two P's? Yep. Hold on, I got it. Woo! Application. All right, so what you find there is life lessons. I, I should have done life lessons. I know how to spell all those words. And you have application right here. What does it tell you about the cross? What do you learn at the cross? Hello? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Oh! That's not going to work. No, it, it will work. I'll make it work. Why? Why all the things? Why? Come on. Why? Everything's working together for one thing. Is there one or two? Connect with God. Christ wants you to do one thing. Connect with God through Christ. Right? 
So everything, now this is gonna make, I'm, I'm trying to get to a point. I just gotta, I gotta get there. I gotta start here. So what he's saying is, I need you to listen to my words. I need you to see what I've done through my teaching, through my miracles, through my parables, and what I'm going to do. It doesn't say it in the Sermon on the Mount, but we can see it in scripture. We can know the cross and the sacrifice. And all of this is to help us to connect with God through Christ. Everything. Everything he does. How do I know that? Use scripture. How do I know that? What does he constantly tell his disciples all the way through this? I'm here to do the what of the Father. Law of scriptures, God breathed. So the Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah. Under, yeah, absolutely. Everything I'm doing is doing by the will of the Father. By the will of the Father who sent me. By the will of the Father. Garden Gethsemane. What does he say? Not my cup, but what? Yeah. Yours be done. Why? He's following his will. What's the will? That all will come into connection with God through him. Everything he's done. Now, the next part he tells us, I need to, I'm need. i going to move on. I'm going to connect this in just a second. If this doesn't make sense and if I'm wrong, you are allowed to tell me I'm wrong. Not to my face. <laughs> What's the third thing? Now he says, hear the words and then what? So we're going to put do. Okay? Then he says, okay, now I want you to do them. What does he want you to do? What? That's absolutely right. But why did you go so quickly to my notes? Okay. Actually, you're not. He wants you to do these. Now, what's one of them you can't do? Cross. Correct. You can almost debate with me, and I would relent if you said, I've got to take up my cross and follow him. I agree. But you're not dying for anybody, right? This is for the death of sin, to take on sin, and so we are free from the death or free from the penalty of sin. So I can't do this, so I'm going to put an X beside it because I can't do that one. Okay, do you understand? I'm not doing miracles either. But I can do these. Well, I'll put in a different color for you. Because I almost came prepared. Oh, I can do that, right? We can sacrifice, right? Yes. Well, I'm a living sacrifice. That's what Romans talks about. I can do these things. Okay. So, let me ask you this question. This a wonderful house that we're going to build here. Your picture-perfect house. Oh, I've always wanted a second floor. Ooh, got one. That we're supposed to build on what? Foundation. So what is the house? Build your house on the rock or build your house on the sand. What's the house? Your life. Life. Okay. What was over here? Life. Same thing? Okay, good. It's our life. No. Hmm. Okay. So what does our life look like? Or supposed to look like? Christ-like. Christ-like. So if it's supposed to be Christ-like, and it's supposed to look like this, right? Would you agree? A core change? Yes. Yes. Compassion? I don't really have power. I have the power of the Spirit. I'm not ashamed. Um, application of what I've learned and the core change and the compassion. I sacrifice my life. If I'm supposed to be Christ-like, and if this is the what of God... The will. What is the will of God? All come to Him. Uh, Through His Son. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're reading the board. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm, my mind's somewhere right now. What is it? Is it Luke 19? To seek and save the lost. Help me out. Luke 19, am I right? Yes. Yes? What's the verse? What's the verse, Bob? Luke. Verse, there you go. Thanks, man. I know. I thought it was seek and save the lost, right? That's what he says. The, 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 the entire book of Luke is, is Luke 19.10. To seek and save the lost. I want with my life to connect people with God through Jesus Christ. Okay. If that's, do you believe that's true or not true? Yes or no? 
You can disagree and you'd be wrong, it's fine. You didn't pick up on the joke, that's fine. <laughs> Do you believe that's correct? Yes. So a lot of times when we talk about this and, 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 and have a lot of conversations with people that go, Don, John, I've done everything right. I've tried to obey, but my life isn't right. What are they talking about? My life isn't right. What is your life designed to do? Connect people with God through Jesus Christ. So the house doesn't even belong to you. It belongs to who? God. Exactly. Yet, agree or not agree, go ahead. Or say nothing. <laughs> Do you agree? You don't have to agree. You can say, John, I see what you're saying, but I don't have a problem with that. You're thinking about something. Well, we agree, but we don't get there. Well, okay, go, go, come on. We, we spend a lifetime trying to get there. Yes. And it's a struggle your whole life to, to get there. And, and that's where my, I, I, you know, I think we're honest with ourselves. We, we, we try to get there. I think everybody in this room works to get there. But so we struggle along the way. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have questions. I, that's where I feel a little frustrated. Could those be your storms? Yes. They're good. That's perfect. And, and I totally agree with you. This is a life, a life build. Would you say that? Right. And it's never perfect. It could be a small house, it could be a, a big, I don't know. It's a, it's a constant build, but it's a growth process that you never grow out of. You're constantly adding, you're constantly building. And you know what, there's gonna be times when you go through these struggles and you questions and you doubt. This, those are, to me are also storms that we didn't talk about this morning at all. And I'm wondering if Satan is throwing those things at you as hard as he can. <clears throat> because if he can shatter, I'm gonna to come to you in just a second, okay? If he can shatter a window, if he can blow open the door, if he can take your roof off of what you thought was right, he just won, right? <clears throat> My, my house, is, I thought I did everything. I'm trying to serve God, but I have these doubts. I'm having these difficulties in my life. Go ahead. I think that what we have to do is constantly check that our house is still on the foundation. Absolutely. That's going to be my next point, you know, which I don't have time for. We live in Texas, and I've seen houses blown off foundations, and sometimes off, off, mm -hmm. because we don't continue to build the foundations. Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. I have a point I was going to go to in just a second. Uh, why do we build on the sand? And honestly, one of the things we, we find ourselves, we start building on the rock, but we find ourselves on the sand because we neglect the foundation. We don't take care of it. You see cracks in your house? Anybody see cracks in your house? I, for years and years. This is, is this our first slab house? That doesn't count. We've always had pier and beam. I've always had to work on the foundation because I see cracks. If there's a crack, there's a problem with my foundation. A lot of times we don't figure it, we, li we neglect it. So I actually find ourselves coming off the, the rock onto the sand and out of neglect. And that's a really good point. Um, and I, I'm, are you good? Are you done? No, I'm good. Okay. And I agree with you that this is a lifelong process. And if you're still not growing, I don't care if you're 80, 90, or 100 years old, this should be still working. And working towards one goal. What's the goal? The same goal that Jesus Christ had when he lived on this earth and died for us. To seek and save the lost. So everything I'm doing is trying to seek and save the lost. Okay? No. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Today, a 15-year-old Christian came by house. He said that he just wanted to call, come check on us, see how we were doing, three friends of ours. Yeah. And he is building his home. He visited with us for about an hour. We just enjoyed him so much. Before he left, he said, oh, my friend is gone. That's awesome. That's, that's building. Back in my day. That's serving. That's getting out there and helping and loving one another. 
right? And I love it, 100%. The more we do that with one another, the world sees that, the, the world wants to be a part of that. I agree, 100%. The way we love one another and what we do outside. Everything that we're doing, we're trying to bring guests to the home because who lives in the home is Jesus Christ. Come on in, I want you to introduce you to Jesus Christ because that's our foundation. Uh, and I think that's really what we need to do. A couple of things, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit and then I'll turn the book back over to Renner. Some of the reasons we don't, that we build on the sand, um, we're not reading like we should. I wanna tell you a, a really quick story. Um, what, is it, what do they call it, Wichita Falls? The smallest, the smallest skyscraper in Wichita Falls. Anybody know it? Yeah. You do, okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you can go downtown Wichita Falls and there's the smallest skyscraper in the United States. And the reason it is the smallest was very simple. The guy made blueprints, showed it to a bunch of investors, but the investors did not read the blueprints. And instead of feet, he put it in inches. <laughs> he got all the money he needed to build a large skyscraper. He built the skyscraper and then they said, you robbed us. And he goes, you agreed to these blueprints. Are these your signatures? Yeah. Well, you didn't read it. A lot of times we are building on the sand because we're not reading it as we should. A lot of times we look at it and go, oh man, I like that, I like that. I'm looking at all these things, I like all these things, but we're not reading it for the actual truth. They should have saw it, it was in inches and not feet. Really cool, if you ever go through Wichita Falls, it's down there. Uh, not at night, don't do it at night. <laughs> you talked about the cracks. Building on, building on the sand is a lot easier, isn't it? When you're building for yourself, um, you can go with the flow, it's just easier to do that. We don't believe the floods are gonna come. We don't think the storms are gonna be that bad. We can handle those storms. I don't need to build on this foundation. This house, man, it's my life. It's what I want and I'm, I'm going to be okay. Um, and we want to build a life for us and I had one gentleman tell me when we were talking about some of these things he goes this is my life and I'm building one for the next generation as well and I thought you could build one for the next generation that will last a whole lot longer but he was all about building something that he can pass down physically more like money and he goes I want to give the next generation stuff and I was like give him a legacy Give them this. They're gonna burn through your money because they didn't earn it. They don't care. Uh, so give them something that really lasts. But uh, we build on the sand a lot. Um, I did not want to, really honestly, I didn't want to talk about the sand a whole lot. I really wanted to talk about this and trying to see this. And I want to do it in the classroom for uh, setting so we can talk about it. Any questions that you have for this? I am that good. I love it. I love it. Uh, before we go any further, just for information, does anyone need to partake of the Lord's Supper that was not here this morning? Okay. I will get those to you in just a moment. So during the time of our reading, we will take some time uh, and, and get that. I had a few over here. Is there anybody else? Okay. Mr. Renner, I will turn it over to you. Song number 719. I always knew it as angry words. When you look it up in the book, it says love one another, which is definitely a better title. We're going to sing all three verses and then the chorus. The chorus once at the end, all three verses together. 719. Angry words will let them
read tonight from Psalm 95. And you may know these words because we sing them. Uh, this is um, a song that we sing straight out of scripture. Psalm 95. Oh, where's my glasses? Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. I sing, we sing this song all of the time, and I, and, I, and I absolutely love it. It goes along with what we've been talking about, that we come to the Lord, we sing praises to him because he is our rock, because he is our creator. Uh, everything belongs to him. But I want you to see the rest of the song. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our maker, for he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in Meribah or as on the day of Massa in, in the wilderness. Now, do you see what he's talking about here? It's exactly what we've been studying all of our day today. When you hear the words, don't harden your hearts. When you hear the words, listen to what he's trying to say. And he's going back to the time of their fathers in the wilderness. For when, and in verse 9, for when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, Though they have seen my work, for 40 years I loathe that generation and said, they are a people who has gone astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. Did you hear what God said there? He, he's, the, the, the psalmist is saying, let's praise God for who he is. But he, he says, but I don't want you to harden your hearts. I don't want you to walk away from God. And he uses the example that in the time of when the people, his people were in the wilderness. And you remember the time when they needed water, God provided it. When they needed something to eat, he provided manna. When they griped and complained about that, he provided the quail. And he always provided for his people. <coughs> and listen to the word that he uses in verse 10 about God and how he saw his people. I loathe them. That's how disappointed God was with his people when they said, no, we don't need you. We're not going to follow you. We're not going to trust that you're going to give us the promised land. Even though you told us we did, we're going to listen to the ten spies and not to the two. We're not going to listen to you. We're going to listen to the voices that we hear. <coughs> and they didn't put their trust in God. And so for 40 years, he loathed that generation. That generation had to go away before the people could enter into the promised land. And he tells them the reason why, because they went astray in their hearts and they did not know my ways. They built their house on the sand and everything came to the end. He says at the end, therefore I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. I love the beginning when we talk about how much we need to praise our God and our maker because he's the rock of our salvation and we sing that song. But just make sure there's a little warning. Let's make sure we keep our eyes and our focus on that and not to walk away from him so we don't have a relationship with him. We have that opportunity today, and we're going to partake of communion with our brothers and sisters today. Um, this is also the story of Christ, isn't it? He is our rocker and our salvation. He's the one that sacrificed his life for us. And what we've been talking about today is making sure that we do not walk away from what we understand what he's done for us. That love and that compassion, the humility that he gave because he left heaven and came here and lived among us and he died for us. And he said, I'm going to leave you with my teaching, my words, so that you know how to come towards me and have a connection with God. And, and I don't want you to walk away from, from God. I want you to understand what he has done so we can praise him as the psalmist has written here. Let's go to God in prayer and thank him for the sacrifice that he's made. Lord and our God, I want to thank you for this day. 
And I truly want to thank you for the time that we've had tonight as a group to open up your word, to learn from what Luke has written uh, to us about how we need to build our life. Lord, help us to build our life on Christ, your son. Help us to remember what he's done, that he did come down to this earth. He did live among us. He felt pain. He felt sorrow, but he also felt joy. He felt all these things that, uh, like Jeremy talked about this morning in his prayer. And we thank you and we praise you for the love that you have for us by sending your son. And we thank your son for giving his life to fulfill your will. And through this sacrifice, we have a, an opportunity to have a relationship with you. Help us never to take it for granted. Help us to realize what love and compassion our lives are built upon. And in Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in prayer. Our Lord and our God, again, we come before you to, to remember the sacrifice and the body that was broken, but also the blood that Jesus shed for us. And it's not just one time. There's, there are moments when I continue to make mistakes. I fall short, and I know that I, I know what I need to do. A lot like Paul, what he says, there's so many times I, I do the things I'm not supposed to do, and I hate them. And I know that I can always come back and ask for forgiveness because you are there, and you will forgive me. And it's your son's blood that continue to, continues to cleanse me. I thank you and I praise you for that. Help me, Lord, to grow stronger and to become stronger and away from doing the things I don't need to do. And I think we all fall into that. And we just ask you, Lord, to help us to be a people for you uh, with our minds and our hearts set upon you and to remember your son's sacrifice and the blood that he shed for us. We say this prayer in your, in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Song number 490, It Is Well With My Soul. Would you please be standing for this song? When peace like a river Almighty God and dear Father in heaven, we come before you this evening, and Lord God, we thank you for so many blessings you've given us in our lives. And
Father, we come before you tonight and just thank you for the blessing of rain. Lord, thank you for answering so many prayers here in, in this part of the world for the, all the prayers we offered up to you for, for rain. And Lord, we, uh, we thank you for hearing our prayers and answering our prayers so many times. Lord God, I just want to thank you for, for Renner and for his ability and his willingness to, to lead us in these songs tonight, Father, and, and thank you for, for giving him the ability to do that for us. Lord God, I thank you for, for John and for Sally, and thank you for bringing them here to us. And Lord God, thank you so much for John's passion to, to lead us in your word and, and to help us want to study your word and, and follow you more. And Lord God, I just pray that we would all work on building, building our foundation on you. And Lord, I pray that you'd show us how to do that each and every day and show us how to draw closer to you and follow you more every single day of our lives, Father. Lord God, thank you so very much for this special day to, to honor our mothers. And Lord, I just pray that you bless all of our mothers and bless all the mothers that are here tonight. And Lord God, thank you for everything that they've done for us in our lives. Lord, thank you so much for Jesus. And thank you for all that we have through him. God, thank you for grace and for mercy. And Lord, I pray for grace for all of us as we all need it. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you so much for all that we have. And thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. And I pray that you would forgive us of all the sins we've committed. Lord, I pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.